What happens when the very person you're supposed to trust and seek help from becomes the source of your distress? Let's go over the faction doctrine David uses. David instructs people to come to him before going to anyone else if they have an issue. The absurdity comes into play when the victims are expected to confront their abuser to discuss their grievances. It's like asking a deer to negotiate with a lion. This is a daunting, if not impossible, task for many. Imagine the predicament of such a victim, where the supposed refuge becomes the source of dread. There is a reason why churches have a hierarchy, to ensure checks and balances. Scripture is clear that we are to have a system of accountability when we are over a flock. Elders, for instance, play a pivotal role in maintaining this balance. They act as a moral compass, guiding the congregation and the leadership, ensuring accountability at all levels. Now imagine a scenario where these essential figures are removed from the equation. This is exactly what happened in 2011, when the elders resigned from their roles, because David refused to repent for his actions of using dreams to accuse people of sin. This is when he really began employing this false narrative called faction, making it harder for them to come forward, to seek help, to seek justice. True biblical faction in definition means you're trying to divide and to call disciples to your doctrines and ideologies. Behind true faction there is always selfish ambition. This allowed for the potential of the misuse of power to go unchecked. Without the elders there was no one to turn to, no one to stand up for the victims. Their voices were stifled, their grievances unheard. Without elders, there's a void, a lack of oversight, and a breeding ground for unchecked accountability to God and to the flock. But what happens when scriptures are twisted to suit personal narratives? This is the question we grapple with when we consider how David uses the scripture from 1 Timothy 5:19. He manipulates this verse, intended to protect himself from what he deems baseless accusations, into a tool that discourages victims from sharing their grievances with others. It's a dangerous game to misuse religious texts for personal gain. The impact is profound and damaging. It creates a fog of confusion among followers, who are led to believe that they are adhering to the teachings of their faith, when in reality, they are being manipulated. The scriptures intended to guide and comfort are twisted into chains of silence, binding those who may be suffering in the shadows. It's a troubling reality we must confront in the church. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5:19 says not to receive an accusation against an elder, except from two or three witnesses, how can you have two or three witnesses if you are forbidden from openly discussing the accusation with others? If an elder is in error or in the wrong, it's not against scripture to discuss it among the brethren before bringing it to the elder. In the following verse 20, it says to rebuke those who are sinning in the presence of all. David manipulates the understanding of verse 19 as well the verses in Matthew 18 to prevent himself from receiving any kind of accountability or rebuke for his errors or sins. The scripture should not be used as a tool to silence or control, but that is what David has manipulated people into believing, because they're not reading the scriptures for themselves. At the end of the day, no leader in the church is above reproach. Anyone who won't receive correction is a wolf. Anyone that receives the correction and repents remains to be a brother, as it says in Matthew 18:15. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. If you go to David and tell him his faults, he will not listen to you. Therefore that shows he does not see you as his brother or a sister, but he seems himself as someone who is above you and doesn't need to hear anything you have to say about himself. We are not talking about just complaining or being critical, we are talking about legitimate concerns about David's character, which have been proven through many encounters with current members and ex-members. We are talking about the many false prophecies and many other questionable practices in the ministry. The Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And at any point, if a leader begins to stray away from the path that Christ has laid for him, then we are not called to blindly follow that leader any longer.